Oh, hello. I'm Reverend Joshua Toulouse, Senior Minister at The Table in Knoxville, Tennessee. I wanted to share with you a few ways to help start, if you're thinking about it, a live stream of your worship service. It's something we've been doing here at The Table for over three years, and we've found a lot of success with it. It's something that um, has been helpful for a lot of the, the members of this church, if they're homebound, if they're sick, um, and also for prospective members, for people who don't feel quite comfortable just walking into a church for the first time, not knowing what to expect. We've had lots of people who told us they've enjoyed that they've gotten to watch the service a couple times and have a better idea of what to expect when they actually walk through the door. So there are a lot of reasons why you might want to start a live stream. For us here at the table, we do that through Facebook Live, which I think is the, the easiest way to do this, both for the people putting on the stream and for the members who are going to watch and interact with the stream. Facebook is something that most of our members have some familiarity with, but even if they don't, as long as they have a little bit of computer knowledge or the ability for someone to help them with the computer, it's really easy to get them to be able to find and watch the live stream of a service on Facebook Live. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the first thing you wanna do if you're going to live stream on Facebook is to have a Facebook page. You can use your own personal account, but I recommend having a church page um, for Facebook. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, it's easier to direct people to than a personal account. And secondly, I don't know about you, but I don't always want everyone to have my personal Facebook account. First, you want to have a page for your church. Um, and when you do that, you will get a URL that directs people, whether they're on Facebook or not, to your Facebook page for the church. For us, that's www.facebook.com backslash the table Knoxville. Now you can put that in on your computer from anywhere. You can have that emailed out to your members with a link that they can click that'll take them directly to the page. Now, if a person already likes or follows your page and they're on Facebook when you go live, likely they'll get a notification that you've gone live. And that's good and helpful. But if they're not on Facebook or if they want to just go straight to when it's time for the service, having this direct link is very helpful. And here's why. I'm going to go ahead and real quick, I'm going to go live from this iPad onto Facebook. When I do, I want you to look here on our Facebook page at what happens. All right, so I've just started the live video. Hi, I'm doing a test here to show people how to live stream their services. So nothing that important right now, really just a test. But what I would like you to notice is over here, you see right there, when I went live, it popped up on the Facebook page and now you can start watching the live ser the live feed that I'm doing. So thank you for anybody who happened to watch this and was like, what is Josh doing? You'll find out later. Have a good day. So I went ahead and finished the, the feed. What that means is if you have people that go directly to the page, they will be notified when the page is live. Also, when you scroll down, you can actually find, hi. I'm doing a test here to show people how to live stream their services. So nothing that important right now. The archive of what you had just live streamed. So if you're not at the computer right when worship is happening, it's okay. It's going to archive it and keep it so you can watch it throughout the week. In fact, we notice at the table a lot of times that we'll have somewhere between 30 and 50 views while the live service is going on. But as the week continues, those views go up. There are people who watch worship when they can, if they can't watch worship when it happens. And so I think that's something that's really helpful about Facebook as well. Um, now, when I went live for this test right here, I did not write anything on the post. You're probably gonna write something on your post. If I scroll down a little bit more, we can get to last Sunday's um, actual live stream. And you can see that I have a post there. Um, I wrote, we're so thankful you're joining us for the second Sunday of Lent. And I also included a couple links, one to our Giveify page so that people watching online could give to support the missions and ministries of the table. 
But also I had a link to weekofcompassion.org because one of the things we talked about in the service were the storms that happened um, not far from here in Middle Tennessee. And we wanted to give the opportunity for people to be able to give to Week of Compassion to help with those efforts. Now, I do want to point out, however, if when you're making your um, Facebook Live post, if you include a link on your Facebook Live post, and I just linked to the church page here, um, it's going to pull up a link so that you can just hit on that instead of on the link. And you don't want that because you are not going to be able to go live with that link there. Um and so you're going to need to get rid of it. So if you have a link, you're going to need to click on the link that it provides in the post and just click remove link to take care of it. And now you can come down here and you can choose live video and start going live. You just hit start live video when you're ready to go. So now we're going to talk a little bit about what that looks like. But I think it'd be better to do it rather than in my office in the sanctuary. So that's where we're going to head right now. Welcome to the sanctuary here at the table. Now there are a couple things we need to think about. When we're in the sanctuary, we're ready to start filming. What are we gonna use? Like I said, you can use an iPhone, an iPad. Um, how we're gonna place the camera. You probably wanna have a tripod or something like it on which to place the, um, the iPad to hold the iPad. Um, do you need a microphone? Actually, probably not. This is just my iPhone that I'm recording from right now. And you can hear me pretty well, even in this place, because most of our modern phone, smartphones and iPads and tablets and the like have really good microphones. So they're gonna pick up everything, especially if you have a sound system. So you don't have to do anything too fancy. Now we actually do have our sound system run into the iPad, but you don't have to do anything like that. You can just use the camera. Once you have a tablet, a phone, um, whatever you're going to use as your camera, a tripod, whatever you're going to use to hold that camera, your Facebook page, you're ready to stream your service. You might want to be a little closer up, so let's do that right now. So right now I have it on the second row of chairs so that the stream can see everything that's going on as if the person was sitting in the pews. I like to move around a lot while I preach, so it's good to have it somewhere where it's going to catch me wherever I wander. It also here is able to see the musician. So that's something you're gonna to wanna to think of when you think about where to place your camera. Also, I mentioned earlier how good these microphones are. So remember, the people that you have sitting next to or near whatever you're using to stream, any little comments that they make to themselves that they think nobody else can hear, the stream is gonna pick up. So that's one thing to let anybody who is at the church in the pews know about those sorts of things and have that in their mind as they are worshiping so that it doesn't interfere too much with those who are watching online. And another thing you're gonna to wanna to think about when you're thinking about where to place your camera is, is it gonna be in a place where a lot of people are gonna be walking in front of it or worse, standing in front of it so that all the people at home see is the back of someone rather than the worship service. These are all things you wanna keep in mind and it's okay to do some trial and error and mess it up a couple weeks and be like, okay, that didn't work, let's try something else. We went through a lot of iterations before we found what worked for us. So don't be scared to try and fail and try again and get something that works better for your space and for your worshipers. That's basically all you need to know in order to start live streaming your worship services. You could do it starting this Sunday. As long as you have a Facebook page for your church, a phone or a tablet and something to hold that phone or tablet and somewhere to place that phone or tablet to stream the service, you can start streaming immediately. I hope this has been helpful and I hope that all of your worship services, whether in person or online, are filled with the Spirit of God. Be careful in this time um, when we're interacting with one another. Remember, keep washing your hands and let's worship God together fully as we can, whether we are in person or online. Thanks for watching.